Turn with me to 2 Peter chapter 1. Uh, I was actually praying very earnestly what I should speak because we were learning some important subjects yesterday and uh, this morning I want to speak about the greatness of our salvation. Many a time we take our salvation lightly. Huh? Because salvation is free gift of God. Anything that you get free, that's typical human nature. Huh? But look at chapter 1, verse 1 to 11 this morning. Depending about the time, I just want to expound this passage. If God has given us free, what we should do with salvation? It was free, but it was not cheap. Salvation is so costly. God the Father was thinking of us. God the Son redeemed us. God the Holy Spirit is abiding in us. But salvation is not cheap. It is so costly. We could not buy it. We could not obtain it by our effort. I want the young people who are sitting here, listen to this message very carefully. And you may have some questions after the message. And I would be happy to talk to you. Have you ever taken salvation so seriously? I used to take, I thought that I was saved because I was born in a Christian family. I used to feel that I'm a child of God. But I never had a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I used to do all the Christian activities because I'm from an assembly background. I used to feel that I'm a Christian, but I was not a believer. I was not a child of God. When I put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, there was a drastic change in my life. And from that time onwards, I started giving importance for my salvation. And I knew from the scripture, salvation is so costly. The Bible says, by grace through faith we have been saved. But, we also have a teaching in our assembly background and I believe that it is biblical. Once we are saved, we are saved for ever. We are saved forever. We believe in security of salvation. Right? It is biblical. So we have got visa for heaven. You do anything, nothing is going to happen. Because our spirit is saved. Huh? Our spirit is saved. And our life, our soul should be being saved. And our, and our body will be saved. We know the theology. We know all these things. But what is really happening in our life? Why are we so dry? Why there is no fruit in our life? And we are, why we are only satisfied with salvation? Let me tell you this morning, salvation is only the first step in our Christian life. Don't be satisfied with only salvation. Don't be satisfied only with baptism. Don't be satisfied only with the Lord's table. Don't be satisfied with the attendance in the assembly. Don't be satisfied only with reading the Bible, meditating the Bible. You know, when God servant counted all the promises given in the scripture, he says there are 7,487 promises in the Bible. Well, when I started counting, most of these promises, some of these promises among this are given to Israel. That's not for us. Maybe land is given to them. That is not given to us. Some are applicable, some are not applicable. But this morning, let me tell you, we are satisfied with the very life God has given to us. But if you read John chapter 10 verse 10, it is written very precisely there, Christ has come to give us life, not only life, life abundant. You know what is our problem? We are satisfied with life. We are satisfied with salvation. And we are satisfied with our church attendance. Nothing beyond. Where is the problem? Why are we so dry? Why are we not so practical? Why are we so realistic? Why are we unfruitful and barren and blind and short-sighted? The Bible makes it very clear. 
ഐ പ്രൈസ് ഗാഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഐ എം ഫ്രം എൻ അസംബ്ലി ബാക്ക്ഗ്രൗണ്ട് കറ കളഞ്ഞ ഉപദേശമാണ് നമുക്കുള്ളത് ഇസ് ദർ എനി പ്രോബ്ലം ഇൻ ഉപദേശം നോ പ്രോബ്ലം വണ്ടർഫുൾ തിയോളജി ബട്ട് വേർ ഈസ് ദ പ്രോബ്ലം യു നോ ദ പ്രോബ്ലം ഈസ് വി തിങ്ക് ദർ ഗോസ്പൽ ഈസ് ഫോർ ഷെയറിങ് ഗോസ്പൽ ഈസ് ഫോർ ബിലീവിങ് ഗോസ്പൽ ഈസ് ഫോർ പ്രീച്ചിങ് ബട്ട് റിമെമ്പർ ദ ബൈബിൾ സെയ്സ് ഗോസ്പൽ ഈസ് ഫോർ ലിവിങ് and we have failed there we share the gospel we preach the gospel we have believed in it we have become his children but many a time we have forgotten to live the gospel gospel is for living and i want you to underline four important words here chapter 1 look at here what god has given to us the first one precious faith did you see that in verse 1 precious faith please underline that we have precious faith the second thing god has given to us please underline precious promises look at verse 4 vileeriya vaagdathangal vileeriya vishwasam now oh, in the whole bible it's only one place that you see precious faith we are precious we have faith but this combination is only in one place in the whole bible that is in verse 1 വിലയേറിയ വിശ്വാസം ദാറ്റ്സ് ഓ വി ആർ സേവ്ഡ് സെയിം ഫെയ്ത്ത് ദി അപ്പോസൽസ് ഹാഡ് സേവിങ് ഫെയ്ത്ത് ഈസ് ദ സെയിം ബട്ട് വെയർ ഇസ് ദ പ്രോബ്ലം ലിവിങ് ഫെയ്ത്ത് ഈസ് ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് പ്രൊഗ്രസീവ് ഫെയ്ത്ത് ഈസ് ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് നാവ് ദ സെക്കൻഡ് തിങ് അപ്പോസൽ സൈസ് യർ വി ആർ പ്രഷ്യസ് പ്രോമിസസ് വിലയേറിയ വാഗ്ദത്തങ്ങൾ നമുക്ക് നൽകിയിട്ടുണ്ട് ദ തേർഡ് തിങ് പ്ലീസ് അണ്ടർലൈൻ ഡിവൈൻ പവർ ഇൻ വേഴ്സ് ത്രീ ഡിവൈൻ പവർ and the fourth thing god has given to us divine nature i need at least one hour for each point but i have to go fast now precious faith precious promises divine power and divine nature and these are the four things god gave to us free divine power God's holy spirit is abiding in every believer we are more powerful than any people in this world because triune god is abiding in us what a great salvation is this these are the four things god gave to us let me go fast now look at verse 5 can someone read loudly verse 5 beside this, beside this giving god diligence yes as to your faith yeah that's enough we will stop there and beside this you know for a bible student these words are very important these are connectives therefore is a very important word therefore wherever you see therefore in the bible you should ask wherefore why for you sh- the preceding verses are so important for you so here and beside this giving all diligence malayalathu nalla vaaka sagela ഉത്സാഹവും കഴിച്ച് ആ ദാർ ഈസ് അവർ പ്രോബ്ലം വൈ ദർ ഈസ് നോ ലൈഫ് വൈ ദർ ഈസ് നോ ഡെലിജൻസ് വി സേ വി ആർ ചിൽഡ്രൻ ഓഫ് ഗാഡ് വി സേ വി ആർ ഗോഡ്സ് ബിലോങ് ടു ഗോഡ്സ് ഫാമിലി വൈ ദർ ഈസ് നോ ജോയ് വൈ യു ഡോണ്ട് ഫീൽ ഹാപ്പി വെൻ യു കം ടു അസംബ്ലി വൈ യു ആർ നോട്ട് എക്സൈറ്റഡ് വെൻ യു ലിസൺ എ സെർമൺ വെൻ ഗോഡ് സ്പീക്സ് ടു യു വൈ യു ആർ നോട്ട് എക്സൈറ്റഡ് now world cup is going on you know i was a soccer player i am so excited i still play with my my students yeah i am a i was a football freak man we call football in india in india huh? some are music freaks here maybe good some people you may be a freak uh, you know in many things but why you are not excited in salvation why you are not excited in jesus christ why you are not excited about the assembly why you are not excited about your spiritual life where is that diligence we think that spiritual growth is automatic ha huh? is spiritual growth automatic nammada vittil oru kunni janichu kenja endakke aa kunninu kodukkunna ayyo my goodness ha endakke aahara kunninu valaran kodukkunnathu but when it comes to spiritual matter oh let him be at home ha huh? എൻ്റെ മക്കൾക്ക് കുഴപ്പമൊന്നുമില്ല കുഴപ്പമുണ്ട് ഇഫ് ചിൽഡ്രൻ ഡു നോട്ട് ഹാവ് ക്രേവിങ് 
desire for spiritual things, that means there are some problem. Only living beings grow. Only living people have appetite. Huh? Suppose if I am dead today, imagine, okay? Oh, Sandosh brother, lunch is not going to die. You can't give lunch to lunch. No, you know that I'm, I have kicked my bucket and I'm over, so this fellow is not going to eat anymore. Why? There is no intake. Dead people have no appetite. But you would say, brother, no, we are all risen. Adikramangalalim, Pavangalalim, Marjoraname, we are pitching the Vyar Chirikia. Where are we seated now? Ang Sorgatil Ritirikia, but she even even a chatta was there. No growth. He has no desire for spiritual matters. If a person doesn't have desire and craving for spiritual matter, that means he is spiritually dead. You may have a good theology. Theology is very good. But if you have no craving for spiritual matters, that means there are some problem with you. My Apachan used to tell one small illustration, you know. Yirumbo laka vidingi it. Chukku kashayam. Kurta Seriavatilla. A man has stolen a big iron rod and it is inside. And he's taken to one small doctor and the doctor says, you know, if we are, he says, I have some stomach pain, you know, and doctor gives a paracetamol or Tylenol, your problem will not be solved. What should be done? Operation has to be done. That iron rod has to be removed. Irimbolaka reading it. That's what is happening to many, many people in our assemblies. We have serious problems. We have many problems and we are trying to solve the problem in a peripheral way. In outside, nothing is going to happen. No prayer, no bhavasam, no, no worship, no spiritual activities going to help. You got to change yourself. You need to have interest. Where is that interest in us? Why there is no interest? I visited Moody Bible Institute last week. And D.L. Moody said this statement. You know what he said? Bible will keep you away from sin. And sin will keep you away from Bible. And look into your own life and see. Why there is no desire to read the Bible? Why I am not interested in spiritual matters? Why I sleep during the sermon time? Why you are not interested in the assembly activities? Basic problem is inside. Not with the assembly. Assemblies also may have some problems. Why there is no diligence? No one grows automatically. You need to strive for an abundant life. You need to work hard. You need to keep up your salvation. Salvation is free. But no blessing is free. No. No. I don't want to make a theological blunder. Salvation is free, but no blessing is free. Then you may remember Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 written, Brother, Surgatile Sagela, Atmiya Anugrahangalalum. Ah, we are blessed in Christ Jesus. Yes, we are blessed. With the package of salvation, all the blessings are deposited in your account and my account. But if you want to enjoy those blessings, you have to be obedient. Let me make a statement like this. Accept salvation. Accept salvation. All other blessings in our Christian life are conditional. No blessing is free. I still I still remember Emichir and Sar, you know, as a small boy, he came to my assembly. You know, he said this illustration. When man was walking through the street and he saw a chayakada, you know, and he saw the board, Idli, 30 paisa, Uppada paisa, Dosha, Ampada paisa, Idiyapam, Oriruva. All it is written, and he saw the board and uh, he went inside the chayakada and he went inside there and asked, uh, you know, the shopkeeper, Dosha, 50 paisa. Italy, 30 paisa. Idiyapam, 1 rupee. Then he asked, what about sambar and chamandi? That is free. Then you put that one little. <laughs> huh? 
Give that chutney a little because that is free. And the shopkeeper says, that's only with dosha and idli. Salvation is free. But all other blessings, if you want to enjoy in your Christian life, are not free. It is conditional. If you are an obedient child of God, if you love the Lord, if you obey, you will get this blessing. That's what Peter is going to say here. Look at it. You don't need a big interpreter to explain this. But I have given a background now. Beside this, giving all diligence, Look at that. The first one. Add to your faith. Virtue. You know, in Malayalam, it's a very funny word. Did you see that? What is that? What do you think about it? Viriam. What do you think about it? I don't think about it. I don't think about it. I don't think about it. That's a poor rendering there. Yeah, because Malayalam Bible is translated in northern part of Kerala. That's not a right rendering. It should be an ardent desire to grow. Moral excellence. Kartavi and Kivalari and Agrahamunda Nanava and Agrahundana Nati Paratilla Mava and Ne Talanda Nyan Nanava Tilla. If anyone has taken a decision like that, you will never grow. You should have a desire. Lord, I am wrong. I have committed this. I want to grow. I am poor. I am vacuum inside. Nothing is there outside. It's only just show. And my real condition, Lord, you know. And you have to give yourself to the Lord. Lord, I want to grow. That's the meaning of the word. Moral excellence. An ardent desire to grow. Virtue. Because we have already saving faith. And if you read down, you will see eight things. Again, we need so much of time to explain those. I'm not going to explain now. You know the word add in English, you may have that. Giving all diligence, look at here, add. Yeah, I was doing a word study on that. In the original language, oh it's a beautiful word. Add. You know, it's a kitchen vocabulary in, in Greek language. Sisters who are here, you might be knowing. Ah, here men also know, they know how to make chicken curry. Huh? It's a kitchen vocabulary. When you make a curry, you add the ingredients to make it more delicious, more tasty. You put the masala one by one, the ingredients, so that it may become more flavorable or it has more taste. So it's a kitchen vocabulary. Add it. Yeah, when you make a chicken curry, you don't say, okay, let masala come in by itself. Let salt by, in its, by itself. Automatically, okay, let it come. You don't say like that. You go to add one by one. That's the word used in the original language. Add to your faith moral excellence. Desire to grow. The second thing, knowledge. Parijnanam. What knowledge? Knowledge of the Most High God. Knowledge of God's Word. Do we know God? Not the way we ought to know. We have many a time Sunday school concept of God. God is love. God is gracious. Huh? God is merciful. We like those attributes of God. Yeah? But have you read in the scripture, in the book of Nehemiah and Chronicles, our God is a terrific God. Our God is a consuming fire. Don't play with him. By his grace and mercy, he has allowed you to live till today. Tomorrow, if you have to breathe, God has to give you. God has to allow you. Don't play with him. Learn his attributes. Learn his nature. We need to fear him. We need to know him. Many years back, I read a beautiful book on this subject written by James Packer, J.A. Packer, Knowing God. If you get that book, read that. We must know our God. 
How much do we know God? You know what is our basic problem? We say that we know many things, but we don't know the way we ought to know. The kind of God we have, the kind of God we have, the kind of people we will be. Do you fear God? That's the knowledge we need to have. We need to know God's word. Do we know God's word? Yeah? We don't know. We don't know. The other day one brother said, Dan to Beersheba were husband, husbands and wife. Husband and wife. Dan to Beersheba in the Old Testament you have a phrase. Have you ever read like that? They were husband and wife. No. Dan to Beersheba is the total length of Israel. Huh? And the other day, I asked in a crowd, you know, in an audience, I said, please open the book of Hezekiah. And all were opening. <laughs> open the book of Hezekiah. No. Huh? We have no book called Hezekiah. We have Yehazkel or Ezekiel. We have Isaiah. No book of Hezekiah in the Bible. No. We don't know the way we ought to know. We don't know many, many things from the scripture. We need to add it. We need to work hard to faith. First, virtue. Second, knowledge. The third one, what is that? We have temperance. What is temperance? Self-control. It has to do with pleasures of life. All the comforts. Who doesn't like comforts? We all like comfort. But draw your line. You should not Carry away us from the love of God. The evil thing is not the same. We should be very careful. We all like comfort. Our facilities is to Allah. It makes us, you know, things to do, you know, very easy, very good. But be mindful. Watch out. Self control has to do with pleasures of life. Pleasures of life. That, too, that would give joy for the flesh. And the soul and the spirit. Be careful. The fourth thing, patience. As I stand here, my heart is in Jamdara. Pray for much patience in my life. We are going through a difficult time. And God teaches patience when we have problems. It has to do with pressures in life. One has to do with pleasures in life, and patience has to do with pressures, when you have sickness, when you have financial problem, when you have problem from children, when we have problem with neighbors, when we have problem in our job, we need to have patience. Wait upon the Lord. And wait and see. And that verse has comforted me several times in my life. Psalm number, Psalm number 46 verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Patience. We need to add it. We need to work hard for this. Not by our might, God gives us grace. When I say, when, I, when we add, not by our might, God gives us grace. The next one, we have godliness. Very simple. What is godliness? Godliness is God-likeness. How did our Savior live? What was his nature? Very simple. Philippians 2.5. What is written there? Let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. Lord, make me like you. That's why he gave us salvation. Not just to take us to heaven. Huh? Why did he give us salvation? Romans 8, 29 and 30. We read there very clearly what is written there. Not to just to take us to heaven. Salvation, why did he give us? Romans 8, 29 and 30 says, He has called us he has justified us, sanctified us, and glorified us so that we may be conformed to the very image Christ our Lord. That's why he gave us salvation. That's why he said salvation is so costly. It's so important. And do you give importance for this? So with faith, virtue, to virtue, knowledge, knowledge, self-control, then patience, then godliness, then comes brotherly kindness. Where is brotherly kindness? We are all selfish people. We are so independent. North American, Canada life, 
You know, we are all independent people. And where is that brotherly kindness? And talk to the old flocks in Kerala. Appachan Marudu Chodhikiya. Where? Sahodara Pridi. My Appachan, you know, he's a farmer even now. He gave me the right meaning of the word brother. In English, you don't get that weight for that word. You know, in Malayalam, Sahodaran. You know what is the meaning of that word? Sahodaran. It's from Sanskrit, which means you are from the same womb. You are from same parents. You belong to one body. You belong to one family. Saha Udaran. From same womb. Where is that binding? Where is that love? Where is that care? That is brotherly kindness. But now we are self-sufficient people. We don't care anyone. We don't cry for others. We don't help others. When, when we have problem in one member, one organ in the body, the whole body should be paining. That's the way an assembly you should work. That is assembly. Assembly is the body of Christ. When one person suffers, whole assembly, whole congregation should stand with that person. That is brotherly kindness. The last one, that binds all other qualities. Charity. That is agape love. God's love. And this last ingredient binds all other seven ingredients. And you got to add that. Now not only adding, look at the next verse. For if these things be in you and abound you, yeah, don't be satisfied. Yeah, you never come to a, a still position. Well, I have all these things. No. You are still striving more. That's why Paul says, I'm not perfect. I'm still running towards the goal. I'm striving towards that mark. Be in, in, and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren. Look at verse 8. Nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. The next verse is very clear. I want all of you to look at that. Verse 9. But he that has, that lacketh these things is blind. There are many things to boast in our life. But the Bible says, if these things you don't have in your life, you are blind. You would say, brother, we are, spiritually we are, you know, our, our eyes are, uh, the eyes of our heart is open. It is written in Ephesians 1. Yes, but you are still blind. Second thing, you cannot see afar off. Short-sighted. That's why many of our assembly believers are short-sighted. I'm not talking about your specs and your physical problem. We are short-sighted spiritually. I made a statement yesterday. I don't know whether you have noticed. During our time, if everything is fine, brother, we are fine. We have no vision for the future. We don't know what will happen to this assembly after 10 years, after 15 years. What are you doing today? We are short-sighted. We live in a hedonistic culture and society. I want to enjoy today. My pleasure for today is more important. What about tomorrow? What will happen to this country after 10 years? What will happen to your assembly after 10 years? What will happen to your family after 10 years? You should have. You should be far-sighted. Why we, are, we have no vision? We don't have these things. Listen carefully. Salvation is only the first step in your life and my life. The rest of the things. There are many other steps to be climbed. Lord, I'm nothing. There is vacuum in my life. There is spiritual poverty in my life. I'm a carnal person. I don't listen to the voice of God. I don't listen to the voice of the Spirit. Lord, I'm walking in my own ways. I doubt your salvation. That's why the next verse makes it very clear. Verse 10. Wherefore, 
the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure always every moment make sure that you are a child of god and live for him and live the gospel and you will not be a blind verse 9 secondly you uh, you cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins you know what do you mean by that you have forgotten the cross you have forgotten what christ has done for you you have forgotten the importance of salvation you have forgotten your forgiveness of sin you live as you like you are blind you are short sighted and you have forgotten what the lord has done on the cross and look at that that is why we are barren we're said that's why we are unfruitful that's why we have no life god wants us to have an active christian life not passive spiritual growth is not automatic we got to work hard we need to strive we need to keep up salvation and this afternoon time i just want to wanted wanted to provoke your thought that have you given importance for your salvation what kind of entrance are you going to get in heaven look at the next verse 11 for so an abundant entrance or a scarce entrance abundant entrance and a scarce entrance whenever i read this verse two things come in my mind you know in the olden time in kerala class 10 pass minimum mark atra irna cha minimum mark ah 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 ha 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 yeah yeah it's coming 210 makale engane engil you know class 10 if you are failed you know it's a big shame in kerala in, during our time somehow you should get 210 now you get 210 somehow go you got inside do you will you get admission in good colleges no all through your life you will regret i should have studied i should have worked hard i should have listened to my parents 210 mark you won't get admission anywhere you have to study private no school no college will take you that's what some christian tell me brother njangalku angana velli kiridam onnum venda angu angu chennamadi the 210 mark always comes to my mind ha <laughs> huh? an abundant entrance into the kingdom of god bible makes it very clear don't be satisfied with just salvation only salvation is free all other blessings are conditional in our, in our christian life what are you doing with your salvation a, a simple parable comes to my mind from Matthew 25. No time to take those verses. You know, every time when I read that, that parable, 25, I know that parable is, uh, is concerning the kingdom of God, but some application. We have three stewards there, right? One God? Five? One? Two? The third one? God one. Matthew 25, yeah. And one who got five, what did he do? He was faithful. He made five more. One who got two, he made, you know, yeah. Then we have the third one. The third steward. Unfaithful. I am not going into the doctrinal part, but only the application part. Come to Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Matthew 25. And look at that verse there, 25, verse 30. 25, 30, what is written there? For you know, no, no, verse 30, 3, 0. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. Some people say it's talking about unbelievers. Because there is gnashing of teeth and weeping. But I don't think that it is hell. Sorry, it is talking about unbelievers. 
and uh, unbelievers going to hell. It is not hell. I'm leaving for your personal study. First of all, these three are believers. They are stewards. You accept that? They are stewards. God is not going to ask any account from unbelievers. God is not going to ask any accounts. Their names are not written in the book of life. They will be thrown into the lake of fire. I believe these three stewards, are, they are God's children. One was unfaithful. Listen carefully. Verse 30 looks like hell. That is why we say that the third one is an unbeliever. Those who are interested in this particular study, you study yourself. But listen this very carefully. The third one is not an unbeliever. He is a steward. And God asked him the account. And he was unfaithful. And what does the Lord say here? Throw him in the outer darkness. And that statement looks like, you know, throwing him into the lake of fire or hell. No. You know, in the olden time, the kings used to call big banquet. I just attended day for a study that marriage. Oh, that banqueting hall looked like beautiful, my goodness. First time I attended a marriage in North American Canada. Yeah. So in the olden time, the king used to call the banquet. He will give rewards to faithful servants. And in the olden time, only the light and the splendor and the beauty, enjoyment only in the hall. Outside it is dark. In the kingdom, in the palace. But if any servant is unfaithful, the king would say, send him out. Let him be in the outer darkness. Those who are faithful servants, stewards, they will be called, will be given some rewards. That is the analogy used there. And the servant who was unfaithful, he was thrown in the outer darkness, in the palace, in the kingdom, but a scarce entrance, no abundant entrance, feeling ashamed. Well, you may ask a question, brother, is there a state of ashamed and ashamedness in heaven? Right? Even Christ said, you will be ashamed in the presence of the Father. If we lead uh, an unfaithful life, listen carefully, all those who are saved and children of God, if we are leading an unfaithful life, if we are leading a backslidden life, if we are leading a, a passive life, if we are unfaithful in our secret life, God knows everything. And one God seven said about this, for many believers, there can be a hellish experience in heaven. Underline that statement. There can be hellish experience in heaven. Closing verse. Please come with me to 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians 3. There is a statement Paul uses. And I want you to underline that. Chapter 3. Verse 14 and 15. You know, if any man's work will be burned, Maram Pullu Vaikol, Ive Al Panada Velagal, Vindidume. Yeah, we sing that song. And verse 15, uh, 14 and 15, if any man's work abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Faithful believers, faithful steward, and there is reward. If any man's works shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved as through fire. Oh my. And whenever I read that passage, you know, that scene comes to my mind from Middle East. In Kerala also now we have a big glass casket. Inside there is a uh, chicken, you know. Have you seen that? I, I don't see here outside, but uh, we call it Naragatele uh, Kodi. Have you seen that in Gulf? You can see everywhere. Uh, there is a steel, and in that there are three, four chicken. It will be rolling. There's heavy heat. 
no feather nothing only the naragathile koli will be rolling and rolling and that's the picture that comes to my mind you shall be saved but as through the fire my goodness what kind of usage is that what kind of entrance are you going to get into the heaven it to get into heaven when you shall stand before the lord the lord will ask what did you do with your salvation how did you lead your christian life faithful unfaithful how are we today look into your own salvation make sure you are calling an election are you a, a, a genuine believer or a professing christian do you have that real born again experience in your life you may have so many other things but that most important cardinal thing are you born again are you a child of god if you are born again are you keeping up that salvation what are you doing with your salvation god gave us precious promises precious faith divine nature divine power but beside this giving all diligence add to your faith all those eight ingredients if you do these things you shall never fail you will not be barren you will not be blind you will not be short sighted you will have an abundant entrance into the kingdom of god let us strive for an abundant entrance into the kingdom of god let us be faithful let us give more importance for our, our salvation and i hope the spirit of god god has spoken to each one of you and give importance for your salvation that is the most important thing in your life may the lord help us to have a blessed and faithful christian life as we live in this country thank you so much may the lord bless us together